Sketchnotes New Zealand. I'm Linda Rubens and I'm presenting Sketchnoting with Keynote. Let's get started. First of all, all resources that I use today and all examples are available on iTunes as a free download, so feel free to have a look at my book when you get a chance. The session outcomes are listed over there, so basically I'll spend a bit of time looking at um, the reasons for doing sketchnoting and how it could look in your own classroom, the different types of sketchnotes that you can get, but the main thing is to look at Keynote and how you can uh, use a few tips and tricks to get started. So the first thing is, if you've got an Apple Pencil, it's a game changer, so I'd say grab that and grab your iPad and just get started. If you need a little bit of help and it's really a good way to, to get you started, find someone to follow like Sylvia Duckworth. She's got both online resources and hard copy resources and it, it just gives your, your ideas a little bit of direction. Now of course there's always the debate which is better, paper or digital and when I started and the image on the left hand side is my very first sketch note and it was a selfie sketch note on paper and I thought yeah this is good, it seemed like something that I could use with my students and that was until I tried it in the digital format and then I realised that digital for me personally is really the way to go specifically when you get your Apple Pencil and you get it in your hands and it feels tactile and it feels authentic. And um, the other reasons why I like digital is because um, everything's obviously compact and all in one place. There's no mess. And as you get older, when you can pinch things out and, and make things bigger, it really does make a difference. But of course, it is quite a personal choice, so you decide for yourself. Right, on to classrooms. So from a teacher's point of view, what I've found is I've liked the creativity that it's added to my resources. So what you can do is take an old resource, an old slide like this one over here, and all I've done is I've emphasized particular parts that I'd like students to have a good look at. Um, or you can just be creative and make it look a little bit more engaging. So that's one easy way to start introducing sketchnoting. In terms of students, I've found that um, students hate planning writing, they hate planning essays, but when you introduce it as a sketch note, it seems like a little bit more fun, it seems like a fun activity, and it becomes a little bit more mean meaningful. The other way could be to introduce themselves at the start of a school year using a selfie sketch note. You could also get them to do character sketches and um, character profiles starting with sketch note. And it also legitimizes doodling. You know those students that just like to have um, a pen in their hand or a piece of paper in front of them or their iPad and their pencil. And so this legitimizes that type of doodling. And in fact, it's strangely meditative and calming. So give it a go. In terms of choosing your tools, now there's a myriad of apps out there, drawing apps, beautiful art apps that you can use. I've narrowed it down to two that I personally like to use, and it depends on the reason for the sketch note, um, which app I'm going to use. So the first one would be um, Sketches or Tayasui Sketch Notes, notes Sketches as it's called. Sorry about that. Um, so if you are wanting to go from a blank canvas, so for example, when you're at a workshop or you're at a conference and you're wanting to try and summarize what someone is saying, I would use the Sketches app. If you look down the left hand side, you've got all the drawing tools that you could possibly want. And when you click on them, they give you the different um, thicknesses of the nibs that, um, you know, sometimes you want a really fine nib and other times you want uh, full coverage. In the bottom right hand corner, you've got the color palette. And that color palette is absolutely endless. So if you can think of a color, you can add it to your color palette. So it really is quite a rich app. In the top corner, which you probably can't really see very clearly on this recording, um, is where you can layer up. So if you decide you want to add a photo and then draw over it and then um, make the, the photo invisible or, or delete the photo, you can do that sort of thing. Now, this example of, the, of this sketch note was a whole day workshop and I've been able to summarize it into one page. 
The other tool that I love to use and what this session is ultimately going to be about is Keynote. Now Keynote, you can go from a blank canvas but ideally what you want to do is take an old um, Keynote deck that you've already created and simply add to it. So all I've done here is added a couple of stick figures and it just makes it slightly more engaging for your students. In terms of the different types of sketch notes, sketch notes that you get, the one is obviously live sketch notes, which I've hinted at um, when you're at a conference. And again, this was a three or four hour workshop that I attended. And there's a couple of basics that you'd want to stick to. And the first one is that you'd probably want to start in the top left hand corner and then work your way logically around the page. I always um, start with a little caricature of the presenter and their name and it's just a really good way for me to uh, remember whose workshop I'd been at. And then I tend to use arrows which gives it good flow so even if you haven't attended the workshop you'll know that you get to here, you come around and you work your way logically around the page. The other thing with live sketch noting it really focuses your attention because you're looking for the gems that people are giving you as opposed to trying to take down all the information that they've given you. So your page would be too crowded or you'd have to go onto page two, three and four and that defeats the object. So what you're trying to do is look for a symbol to represent either an emotion or a phrase or in fact a whole concept. Here's another one and in fact with this one I've probably done a better job because not only have I used the arrows, I've also numbered it and this was a full day workshop. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that um, with Sketches app, it comes with built in fonts and I find that my handwriting is pretty messy so I tend to use the built in fonts as you can see over here and then I also add my name because remember regardless of what, where you start in and what your sketch note looks like it is yours and it's original so you want to name it. Planned sketch noting is slightly different as you can see with this one over here it was our 2019 Christmas card so what you can do with planned sketch noting is add photos and then just personalize it, personalize it um, around the edges. And the difference between planned sketch noting and live sketch noting is that you've got time to think about the placement of things on a planned sketch note. Right, and on to the focus of this uh, workshop, which is actually your keynote hacks. So if you look at this slide, it's pretty basic. Um, all I've used is a couple of um, stick figures. But what takes it to the next level with Keynote is the colorful. And so if you look at my characters over here, they are very streamlined and very crisp. And I'm going to explain how that works in Keynote in just a minute. Okay, so to get you started, I'm gonna do what I said you shouldn't do. And I'm gonna go from a blank slate, as you can see over here. But that's fine, you can, you can um, decide for yourself how you want to use it as you go along. The first thing is you go to the plus sign, you get the drop down box, and you wanna click down to drawing over there, and that'll get you started. Now, as you can see, this is the interface on Keynote, and it's a lot cleaner and um, streamlined compared to the sketches app that I showed earlier. So you've only got the pen, pencil, the wax crayon, the paint and the eraser and the lasso if you're really interested in using that. The color palette is quite extensive and what I'd suggest if you are a beginner to Sketchnote is that you start with your color and then you choose your tool. So for example, for this little drawing over here, I started with white, I then went to the pen and I drew the outline. Okay, so that should get you started. Again, start with simple line drawings. So if you stop and look at the screen for a second, this very simple line drawing is actually made up of a whole lot of shapes. So we've mainly got semicircles and circles with a few lines um, added in. So when people say, oh, I can't draw, Actually, you can draw. Just put your shapes together. So start with something simple. 
Now this doesn't look like a fantastic slide, I um, agree with that, but this is the power of Keynote because what I'm showing you here is the fact that once you have drawn something, and obviously I haven't finished it because I haven't colored it in, but what you've got is a standalone independent image, just as if you had added a photo to your Keynote. So that means that this can be copied into your camera roll. It can be copied onto the next slide. It could be copied into a completely different Keynote deck. So do you see the power of this editable image with all of these functions like any other picture that you've added to Keynote? Now, normally you'd probably want to finish this and then copy and paste it somewhere else, but there might be a reason why you need two, three or four of the same image and then get the students to go and color it in, for example. So again, a bit of a silly um, slide when you look at it, but what I'm showing you is that I've taken that one simple image and I've resized it, I've flipped it, I've cropped it, I've copied and pasted it. So there's a number of functions you've got in Keynote. So that's hack number one. Hack number two is the one I referred to earlier, and it's those crisp, clean color lines that I love about Keynote. So what you do is, you make sure that your shape close, has closed lines and that's very important and I stumbled through that so I'm going to say it again. You close all your shape lines. So for example, this semicircle over here, if you look closely you'll see I've got a white line going across the top and then it closes over there. Because then what you can do is you choose your color. So I've obviously chosen that color on the color palette. You choose paint or the paint tube and then you tap once on the shape and the shape gets filled for you as opposed to you picking up the pen and going and coloring it in. You'll get a very different effect with that. So that's what gives you that really crisp clean streamlined um, look. The same is with the eyes. So if you'd have to make sure that you have closed the circle completely then I would tap on white, tap on the paintbrush and then tap on the eye and the same with that dot over there. So I'll reiterate that, close your lines otherwise this function won't work. You can still do it your way so you could pick up the wax crayon for example and go and color that in but closed lines is the only way it works when you go color, choose your color, paint tube, tap, fill. Okay so that's basically my last message for you is give it a go um, start with perhaps keynotes, which uh, we all know pretty well. Um, join your lines, start with little um, shapes and put them together, and then perhaps have a look at sketches and try um, a live sketch or even a planned sketch for yourself. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me through the ADE website, or failing that, you can always contact me on um, Twitter. And hopefully you're going to give sketchnoting a go and I'm hoping that you're going to find it as creative, meditative and calming as I have.